In this video, we're going to talk about the algorithm library that comes as part of C++'s standard template library. So before we start, I've created two vectors. One vector has the numbers from 1 to 9 in a random order. The second just has 1s and zeros in it. And then I've printed both of those vectors using different mechanisms. So I printed the first vector using an iterator. And we use that iterator from the begin function returns an iterator, and then we go until we get to the end. And then we do have to dereference whatever each value is as we go through the array. And you may notice if, as review that that's actually a pointer there, but that's not going to be our focus for this particular video. And a, slight, a, a significantly cleaner way to do that would be using a range for also called a for each, where we get each individual element out of the vector and then print them individually. So if we compile and run this, you can see here's our vector. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sort the vector. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we do this sort is performed in place. And what that means is it's not going to return a sorted vector. It's actually going to sort the vector we're working with here. So I'm going to call standards sort. And I'm going to go from the beginning of the vector to the end. So I could use vec begin and vec in, but there's also a begin and end method I could use. So I, either of these is fine, begin vec or vec begin. And so that sorts from the beginning to the end of the vector. And so now let's copy this print code we had above and say so let's compile this and run it and you'll notice it sorted the vector let's say that we've decided oh we didn't want the vector sorted we kind of want to shuffle it again you can actually shuffle the vector and that's also going to be done in place and we're going to need to set up a random number generator. So now that I've done that, I can call shuffle. Again, from begin to the end. And you may wonder why doesn't why do we tell it where to begin and end? Well, you can select different parts of the vector to sort or, sh or shuffle if you would like. There's no reason not to do that. We're going to pass the random engine that we just created. So now let's take vector two and print that out. Or actually let's do vector one since that's what we shuffled. So if we run, if we compile and run, We didn't call it vec1, we just called it vec. So when we run this, notice the vector has now been shuffled again. So that's pretty handy if, if you ever need to do that sort of thing. Um, again, we haven't really talked much about the random numbers, but if you're in an application that really is mission critical to have really purely nice random numbers definitely look into how those are implemented because there are some things you can do to get better performance but that's beyond the scope of what we want to talk about so another thing we can do is we can perform counts using standard count so i'm going to create two variables the number of zeros is going to be the count of the zeros in vector 2. 
And then the number of ones is going to be the count in vector two of ones. So then we'll print that there are num zeros, zeros, and num ones, ones in VEC2. So let's run this. And so you see that there's five zeros and four ones in vector one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So those look like those are correct. Let me just add a space here so that that's a little cleaner. There's also a find function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a range four over an array of elements, and I'll search for each of those elements. So I'll search for negative one, two, seven, and 12. And notice negative one and 12 aren't in VEC, but two and seven are. So that'll be a nice test to see how this works. And I'm going to say if standard find and I'm looking for element and if that's not equal to the end of the vector then I'm going to print that I found the element in vec. And otherwise, I'm going to say did not find that element. So let's run this. So we have a bug somewhere. And we're missing our closing parentheses here. And, and by the way, I don't think we've done a, seen an example of this, but this is an initializer for an array. So when I do this, I can do the for each over that array. And then it's almost like a, a one-time use. Almost you can think of it as an array literal as far as how it's actually getting used. So that should fix that compile error. And when I run this, it did not find negative one, it did not find 12, but it did find two and seven. So we can be sure that that actually worked. Another example I wanna show you of some functions that you can kind of use to, to determine if there are some different constraints in your collections. So we're going to use some lambdas. And these are the three lambdas we're going to use. The first is we're going to check if something's a positive number. We're going to check if it's a negative number, x less than 0. And then if it's an even number, x modulo 2 is equal to 0. So we won't discuss lambdas here. But just for now, think of it as that's the test we're going to perform as we do these functions. So the ones we're going to talk about next are all of, any of, and none of. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to say, are all the numbers even? So we'll say if standard all of, we'll do from begin to the vector to the end of the vector. And then we're going to use the lambda for an even number. And then I need to close my parentheses. And then I'll say that, or I'll print out that if that's the case, all the numbers in vector are even. Otherwise, I'll say not all numbers in vector even. Just so that we could do an example where there, 
where we get, so they're not all even, so we're going to get, this is going to return false. But just to demonstrate that this works either way, we're going to do another one where this time instead of checking if they're even, we're going to check that they're positive and that should return true. So this way we're checking, okay, does it return true correctly? Does it return false when we expect? And so here we're going to say they are positive and here not all numbers in fact are positive. So we should get one false result, one true result, and that'll help us have faith that this is actually working correctly. So here we go. Not all numbers in VEC are even, but all the numbers in VEC are positive. So that's good. That's what we would expect. Now, in addition to all of, we can use a, a lesser constraint. And actually, let's put the question we're asking here. So here we're saying, so now let's ask this question. Are any numbers in VEC even. So we're going to say, and if so, we'll print some numbers are, are even. But let's see how we calculate that. Let me copy this lambda that checks for even numbers. And we're going to say if standard any of, again, vec from the beginning to the end of the vector. And then here's the lambda we're going to use. So that should be any. And then, so if that's the case, we're going to say some numbers are even. Otherwise, we'll say no numbers in VEC are even. And then there's one other. We'll go ahead and do uh, none of before we ask this are none of the numbers in VEC even. So we're going to kind of do the same thing, except and say, instead of saying any of, we're going to say none of. And if none of the elements are even, we're going to say none of the numbers in VEC are even. Else, we can say some numbers in VEC are even. So let's compile. And we run. And so some numbers in VEC are even. And notice we get that result twice. First, because any of with this lambda is true. So it returns true. None of with that same lambda is false, so we do the else case, which is some numbers in VEC are even. Okay, so that's a real quick introduction to some of the things you can see in the algorithm library in C++. There's a lot more there. There are some links on the C++ information page if you're interested in digging in further, but even this is far more than, than you'll actually need to know for this course, but I wanted to make sure you had an introduction because I think from this starting point, you can dig in and get a lot of other helpful methods.